guys, it's Ashley, and welcome to my reading vlog for Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. Before I get into anything and why I am making an introduction rather than just having it be the vlog, I am going to leave link down below my book talk book talk, I don't know why I said it that way, to Renegades by Marissa Meyer, which is book one in this series. I haven't watched it in a while, but I'm sure that I go through a lot more in that book. Plus, you don't want to be spoiled for anything that happens in this book, so just go down in the description below and click on that if you don't know what I'm talking about. But for now, if you haven't read this book yet, you're not gonna be spoiled yet. That's what this introduction is for. Stick around and I'll give you my little synopsis or two or you know what I mean. If you've been following me since however long ago, um, I love Renegades and I loved this book. So the reason I'm making an introduction to this vlog is because I want reading vlogs to start constituting my book talks. I love, you know, getting my thoughts together and writing them in very cohesive sentences that sometimes make sense and sometimes don't, but I feel like you get a much more like genuine, more intimate reaction to what I just read if I show you in the moment and tell you in the moment. Plus, it prevents me from having to take notes all the time because I suck at taking notes and you guys know it from the amount of times in book talks I've said, and this is the point where I stopped taking notes because things really picked up. So I think from now on reading vlogs are what I'm going to be doing, but I'm going to be doing a little like spoiler free section in the beginning and then getting into the vlog. So Arch Enemies, um, if you don't know what this book is, let me talk about what Renegades is about. Um, it's basically a story about supervillains and superheroes and what it means to be both and what it means to um, live in a world where people have the power and what the power means. We follow a girl named Nova who is an anarchist or a supervillain, and then we follow a boy named Adrian who is a renegade or a superhero. And we all live in this city together where they both hate each other, but they don't know each other yet. Nova wants the renegades to die and Adrian wants the anarchists to die and it's a great relationship. So Nova goes undercover into the renegades and poses as a renegade. Um, to gain their trust and confidence and gain their secrets so that she can get something back and so that something can happen and they can take them down and all of this stuff. So much happens in the first book and so much happens in this book. I just like loved it so much. One of the things that I really loved about this book in particular was that it didn't feel like a filler book to me. Usually some middle books and second books in series do have that second book slump, you know, where the second book is really just like a filler book. It was unneeded. It was unnecessary. I didn't feel that in this one. Granted, there were parts that I felt maybe could have been excluded, like very rarely though. Overall, I just really, really enjoyed the story and I thought that it was a really good like pace to get to the next one. And while the last one left off on you know, like a bit of a, like, what's gonna happen? This one left off, off an even, on an even bigger, what's gonna happen? And I'm really, really excited for the third one. If you didn't know, this book was actually only supposed to be a duology. Um, it wasn't supposed to be a trilogy, but Marissa Meyer extended it into a trilogy, which was why I was a little bit more scared that this one was going to have a little bit of a slump, but it didn't, and I'm so happy about it. Something I really, really loved about this book is that Nova and Adrian's relationship progressed. It was something that I was really, really eager to see in the first book, and it was something that we didn't really get to see in the first book, so I'm really happy that it happened in this one. Even though Nova has her ulterior motives for everything that she's doing, you know, you can only have so much of that when you're posing to be somebody else before you start to see their side of things. There's also the introduction of something called Agent N, which I'm not going to talk about, and about what it is in this section because it kind of, I guess, spoils a little bit about what's gonna happen, which kind of changes the dynamic completely and um, causes some like great arguments and some great points to be brought up with like what is power and what happens when you give a group the sole power and they can do whatever they want with it. Like, I think that that raises really good questions, especially when it pertains to today's world and uh, not just in this like weird, dystopian futuristic world. I talk a little bit more about that in my vlog, so if you've read this book and you are interested in knowing more, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start playing that now. It's pretty short because I read this book so quickly and I only vlogged maybe like three parts of it. That'll be done super quick, but if you are interested in getting into this book, definitely go check out my Renegades book talk and read that one first, obviously, since it's the first book. But um, I just highly recommend this series in general. It's so, so good. I'm so excited for the third one. So, without further ado, here's the vlog. I hope you guys enjoy, um, 
Yep. Hey guys, it's Ashley and today I am reading Arch Enemies, which is book two in the Renegades series, trilogy, whatever it's gonna be. I should have started this vlog a few days ago because I'm already like 195 pages into this book, but I just kept putting it off and I totally forgot and the next thing I know I'm like reading it last night and I read like 130 pages and I'm like, what the heck is happening? I need to start this vlog right now. So here we are. Oh, <gasps> hello. Hello, Maverick, sir. How's it going? How's it going? Are you good? So this book is so crazy. Oh my god. First off, I just want to put out there that Nova and Adrian's relationship is so funny to me. I just like, okay, the first book they were feeling things. They were like really into each other. You know, they were friends and then they were something more. And then at the end, Adrian tried to kiss her and Nova ran. And then in this book, Nova tries to kiss him and Adrian ran. I love them. I really like seeing Nova as a renegade and I know that they're there are times when she feels like she is a renegade even though she does have plans to take them down and to make them pay for what happened to her family but there are times when she agrees with them and granted although most of the time she disagrees you know she's finding that saving people and helping people is sometimes nice granted I do agree with her that having these superheroes and this is a really cool thing that Marissa Meyer has done in the story having these superheroes saving people and makes the citizens of Gatlin City so reliant on them and so I like Nova's standpoint that why do we have these people so reliant on these superheroes like the part with the medical thing right like when um, Hawthorne and whoever else they took the pills and they were all like antibiotics and now the hospitals are running out of medication and instead of I guess sending healers or whatever or I don't know like Nova said the, the people who are not prodigies that's what I'm trying to say instead of telling them to learn how to do medicine for themselves and to learn to be doctors and be less reliant on these people they are doing something completely and totally different and so that it just makes people even more reliant on them and so yeah it's she's creating this cool and interesting conversation on power and what it means to have power and what it means to have people be so reliant on you in a way that you know you are at this tipping point and so I think agent N is the tipping point in this situation because agent N which is like the um, serum that takes away prodigy's powers it's kind of like that tipping point of you know you have so much power but when do you draw the line as to what to do with it? There was that one moment that really like exemplified what I'm talking about and it was at the very end of that scene when they introduced Agent N and Winston lost his powers and um, she was talking to Dana and Adrian and all of them. Nova said something like, you know, when we're all that's left, what's stopping us from becoming villains ourselves? And that is such an in interesting question that she's posing in here, especially because of what's happening in today's world. So I'm really eager to see what's going to happen. That's what I'm going to say about that topic for now because we went a little deep there. So let's continue. Um, we're seeing more of Dana because we didn't see a whole lot of her in the last book because she was in the medical unit for so long. I love that Dana is getting really suspicious of Nova. I love that. Granted, I don't like how it's hitting you know, female, female together. It's kind of making both of them seem like real bitches, if I'm being honest, um, Dana especially. But I do like how they're having one member of the team suspicious of her. And I like that it's Dana because Dana was out of it for so long in the first book. She was in the medical unit she didn't experience any of the stuff that the other people did that made them trust Nova. So now she's kind of wary of Nova and I'm so, so excited to know what's gonna happen. I'm ready for that betrayal scene, but I'm also not ready. Oscar and Ruby are freaking adorable. I love them to death. Every scene that I have to see Captain Chromium and the Dread Warden and all of the, the council or whatever, it literally just makes me wanna vomit. But I do like their relationship, especially when it comes to Adrian and whenever he's having a conversation with one of them and he's like, hey dad, hey pops, I'm like, Oh God, I like this, but I also don't like this because I don't like them as people, but I like them as parents. I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird thing happening here. I don't know what is happening with Hawthorne. I don't know if she's going to find out about Nightmare. Oh my God, that scene with Winston when Adrian got him the puppet 
and Winston was gonna tell him something that he wanted to know, I knew that he wasn't going to say that Nova was Nightmare. For some, I just, I feel like that would have been too basic of a reveal. Like it needs like a grand reveal. And if we don't get this grand reveal, I'm gonna be so mad. Oh my God, the part when he was like, yeah, your friend Nightmare, she's still alive. And um, and Hugh and Simon were both like, uh, he's pulling your leg, Adrian. I just really love this story, <laughs> if you can't tell. Okay, so the part that I'm currently at right now, I'm on chapter 18. Oh, I just got to the part where Adrian was asking his dads if he could paint the uh, art studio, or as they called it, the storage room. <laughs> oh, oh, it's their first day of Agent N training, so this should be fun. Yeah, the whole introduction of Agent N just really makes me angry. I don't think that anybody should have the right. It just brings it back to that power dynamic. It's like they introduced this code that nobody like voted for in the first place. They were just kind of like, these are the rules, you follow them. And because the humans were so dependent on them because they didn't know how to save themselves, God forbid, they were just kind of like, okay, we'll follow. The whole point of the villains early survival was them wanting to choose what to do with their powers. And granted, I do think that loss are a good thing and that some of the things that the villains were doing were bad things like killing and stealing and all of that but still like just breaking it down into principle okay so i think i've talked enough about what has happened so far in this book um i'm gonna update you periodically as i get to parts that i really like and i don't know i'm just looking forward to seeing what happens in this story anyways i'm gonna go eat dinner so i will uh update you guys later okay i feel like this is going to be the shortest vlog in the world because i'm literally just saying all of this stuff in one day i have the same sweater on i've been reading for a few hours now i've literally read i've read about like 250 pages in the past like two, three hours and i'm flying through this book because it is so good oh my god it's so good okay right now i'm at the part where everything is about to converge and everything is about to come together that scene when nova goes to the mansion to try to i guess find the medallion or whatever oh my god speaking of the medallion oh my god how did i forget this part jesus um the part where adrian takes the medallion that they've had in the vaults for years and is able to go see and hug and touch Max with it. <laughs> like what the hell? Why have they had this thing in the vaults for years and he is just now realizing that he can use it? But that moment was so, so endearing and so sweet and just to see like their brotherly love, you know, because they haven't been able to touch each other because Max can basically steal everybody's powers. Like I said in my Renegades book talk, which I think I said in my Renegades book talk, so I'm going to assume that I did. Max is the uh, Peter Petrelli <laughs> of the Renegades series. And if you know what I'm talking about, good for you. No, but that moment was so, so sweet and so endearing, especially the moment after that when um, Adrian gave the medallion to Simon and Hugh so that they could all be together as a family. That was so, so freaking cute. We're gonna return now to my usual position when I'm vlogging. I feel like this is the only position that I vlog from on my bed, but you know, what else is new? The moment when Nova is walking up to the mansion that Hugh and Simon and Adrian and their family lives in, the moment that she was walking up there, the entire time I'm like, what is your excuse for coming to this house in the middle of the night? The excuse that she was preparing was that she just wanted to see him, which like, yes, I get, but also it's the middle of the night. But anyways, that scene when she goes into the jungle and he brings it to life for her and just like the awe and the wonder and just everything that she's feeling in that moment and the fact that they like fell asleep on the floor together and that she actually slept and I mean, yes, it does make sense that since Max took some of her power that she, you know, might be able to sleep now. But at the same time, just like having her fall asleep with him was so cute. And the fact that right afterwards she realized that it was because she felt safe for the first time in her life. I just like, oh, my heart. They're so cute, though. Oh, my God. When they started like making out on the couch, I was just like cheering them on. But then... <laughs> 
I have to bring this up because this is too, like, there are so many ways to work around this situation and she just picked none of those and went straight for it. So, um, when they're making out on the couch and Nova's like, you know what, I probably should do what I came here for, you know, we're not gonna have all night, blah blah blah. While they're in the middle of making out, she puts him to sleep. Like, full on, like, lips on lips, and then just, he just drops asleep. Does she not think that he's going to think that that is a little weird the next morning? Like, yeah, she can blame it on, like, well, you fell asleep during the movie, and blah blah blah, but, like, come on. Why did she not just stop kissing him, say, let's watch the movie, and then put him to sleep then? Then it would be really like, okay, we stopped making out, we started watching the movie, I fell asleep in the middle of the movie. It wouldn't have taken that much longer and it would have saved you a lot of hell in the end. I don't know, that one little moment just like really made me mad just thinking about it. I'm like, girl, girl, you have time to think of all of these mastermind evil plans and yet you can't even figure this one thing out. I am so ready for everybody to just know who everybody is and for all of this shit to go down. So um, I will see you soon. Wish me luck. I waited until the next morning to film this because I had like too many thoughts and I was too emotional. Not like crying emotional, but just like angry emotional that I, I didn't really think that I would be able to word this correctly, so I didn't and here we are. So where I left off in the last vlog, it was about where everything was about to go down. So Nova as Nightmare went into the, uh, whatchamacallit, the Renegades headquarters and she went to go get Ace's helmet and Adrian as the Sentinel, Ruby and Oscar went to go uh, try to free Dana's butterfly, not knowing that's what they were doing, and then they stumbled upon Ace. Um, oh my god. So I thought at the end that Nova would return to the cathedral right as they were inside of it and that they'd have to face Nightmare and they'd figure it out that it was Nova and that she would get away and that's how the story would end. And I was so disappointed when that's not how it ended. If this had stayed a duology like it originally was supposed to, I could have gotten that ending right now. But no, instead, now I have to wait another few months until November to get it and I'm kind of mad. No, but in all honesty, I really did love this book. I think I talked about this in my Renegades book talk a long time ago, but I just really love how Nova and Adrian have like three different alter egos. Like, they have their their true personalities, their true, like, names. And then they have their names that everybody knows them by, as in Insomnia and Sketch. And then they have their names that nobody is supposed to know, which is Nightmare and the Sentinel. And I love it. Adrian, it's not that difficult. It's not. You have to think. Nightmare was with Max. So, if she can still use her power, which she can, what does that mean? Does that mean she's immune? No. Does that mean she has the medallion? Why don't you go looking for the medallion? Can you find the medallion? No. She has the medallion. How would she have been able to get the medallion? Oh, the only other person you told about it was Nova. Ah, uh, well, you know, it can't be Nova, so you gotta think of something else. Like, no. I'm sure that something like that is going to happen in the third book, but I really want there to be this dramatic, betraying reveal. I'm so ready for it. Adrian shows Ruby and Oscar that he's the sentinel. They get really mad at him, but then they're like, you know what, whatever, we gotta help you. So they're helping him. And they end up finding Ace Anarchy. And Ace doesn't have much power left because he's so old and frail. And so he kind of just like collapses. So they take him into custody. And then Adrian finds out that the Renegades headquarters has been attacked and that Max is going to try to stop Nightmare. And so he rushes over there as the sentinel, of course because he can't do it himself. Then you have Nova, who was actually pretty smart in waiting for the gala to break into the headquarters, but not smart enough to not think that they wouldn't have somebody on security. And then she gets hijacked by Janissa's team, Frostbite's team or whoever, and she ends up taking away all of their powers. I really love that moment where Janissa like stabs her in the heart with that dart and uh, nothing happens. <laughs> love it. Um, what I don't love is Max trying to get the helmet away from Nova, which, okay, I do actually love that. Max is a badass, a 10 year old little badass. But what I don't love is that moment. Oh God, that moment. Max is coming up behind Nightmare. Janissa takes the spear and tries to drive it into Nightmare, but she dodges and it hits Max instead. Oh. 
Now the Sentinel shows up and he thinks that Nightmare was trying to kill Max and so the ni Nightmare runs away with the helmet and he gets into the hospital and then, and then the stupid boy shows up at Nova's house while all of the anarchists are upstairs and asks for her help in finding Nightmare. I'm just like, lo and behold, you're asking Nightmare to find herself. <laughs> Oh my god. This boy is literally clueless. Um, so basically we've learned Adrian is oblivious. Nova is extremely smart and a great actress. And Ruby and Oscar are just along for the ride. And we're gonna see what happens. So the Renegades have Ace now and they're planning on making a big show of getting rid of his powers, which I'm eager to see how Nova is going to try to stop that. But I think that's about it. So I am going to swing it back over to my intro card so that we can wrap this up quite nicely. I'm still very mad that I didn't get the scene that I wanted. Very, very angry. Do you hear me, Marissa Meyer? I'm very angry with you. At least I have something to look forward to in November. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts on Arch Enemies down below or if you're interested in reading it. I think that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching and I will catch you later. Goodbye.